Okay. Hello and welcome to our presentation. I'm Chen Chen Carey. And I'm Laura. And we're here today to talk about teacher created podcasts for multimodality EAP learning. So we'll take a look at the background and a little bit of the literature review, as well as share with you the questions and our methodology, results, interpretation, and future action that we have actually already begun taking. So at the beginning of the semester, starting in 2022, I believe, believe September, uh, some of Carrie's students in her EAP course approached her asking, are there materials that we can access? Is there something that's level appropriate for us to develop our listening skills? We talked with each other. We'd known that we were both interested in podcasting. And Carrie said, shall we try to make a podcast? I said, yes. We did a diagnostic, found out that students were definitely interested. Um, they were struggling with the syllabus of their course. They didn't have a lot of experience. We had about 21%, but they also were interested and they wanted to improve their speaking vocabulary and listening, which a podcast could potentially do. And all of this added to the fact that the students are in a transnational education uh, university. Yes, and it also aligns with our university's learning and teaching strategy. That's exactly right. So we did a bit of literature review to further understand the application of podcasting in teaching. Well, podcast is defined as a downloadable audio or video file. And podcasts can be generally categorized into student generated podcasts and teacher created podcasts. Well, in our case, we created teacher created podcasts. Podcasting is a typical type of mobile learning because students can learn at any place at any time. They can learn a lot of new information on the go. And teacher created language podcasts are believed to be an important authentic language input and it also features sustainability. So with this, we started with these two questions. How do EAP year one core students perceive the effectiveness of informally improving their English language skills via teacher created podcasts, as well as how do EAP year one core students access and use multimodal learning materials such as podcasts. So we were mostly interested not so much in any particular improvement of their language, but rather students' perception of improvement. And just going to jump ahead, sorry. The We created five original teacher-created episodes, 10 to 15 minutes each. We opted to deliver these over five weeks on Carrie's Learning Mall page, which is the platform that we have here at the university. We followed the five topics of the syllabus, so zoology, business, history, bioethics, and learning styles. We delivered them in a conversational style, non-instructional, and opted to really make the topics as relatable to the students as possible, using summaries, personal stories, trending topics, maybe some interesting unknown facts about topics that they already knew, here being in Suzhou. Our sample was 75 EAP year one core students. The pre-survey, we had 60 respondents. Weekly after each episode was dropped, we put out another survey during which about 50 responded each week. And then at the end, we had 46 post-study surveys. So as the numbers were kind of declining slightly, we also decided that a focus group interview was useful. And we created two focus groups, four participants in each one, to find out a little bit more about these particular students who had demonstrated through the analytics of the podcast platform that they had listened to each podcast at least once from beginning to end. Many of them they had listened to more than once and we were curious to know more about their habits and perceptions. This is what it looked like on the page. So they would give the title, 
the students could see some key words. We did not provide a transcript. They could see how long it was. For Android users, this was available as a download and how long it would be. And as you can see, this was a very popular topic. So 75 people in the sample group, 1169 total views. Another topic on business, 879 total views. So based on the data we collected, we, uh, yeah, based on the data we collected, here are some important findings. And one of the most important findings is about the students' listening habits. What did they do exactly when they were listening to the podcast? So the majority of students managed to complete listening more than four episodes out of the five given episodes. And the ideal length of an episode, as we've learned, is 10 to 15 minutes. Some of the students listen to the podcast in a quiet place, whereas some other students listen to the podcast when they were involved in some other different activities. Most of the students accessed the podcast via our school's online system. And most of the students, well, nearly 80% of the students repeated and replaced certain parts of an episode according to their own learning needs. More than half of the students spent 10 to 20 minutes after listening to the podcast by doing a lot of post-listening activities, which can be further demonstrated by the bar chart here. Among all these different activities, as you can see here, the top three most commonly adopted activities were to keep a vocabulary journal or to search the examples mentioned by Laura and me in the podcast, or to collect the ideas they've learned when listening to the podcast. You can further explore some other different activities that students did after they listened to the episode. For instance, they will focus more on mimicking the pronunciation, or they will think more about how to apply the examples for their future speaking assessment. So looking at then their perceptions and recognizing that prior to this, we had very few students who had used an English podcasting list, uh, for listening experience before. But afterwards, we were told like 97%, 98% said, yes, we will definitely try to find another English podcast, which shows that the confidence level had hopefully grown, um, that they would recommend this to others. So seeing their perception of usefulness, um, suggesting, yes, it was useful. It, they could learn things that they didn't know, learn more about the world, as well as develop their skills and feel that they were getting a level appropriate input of language. And as we can see here, students' comments were, it gives me confidence, it opens my mind. Here are some extra important findings. We discussed the necessity of attaching assessment to the podcast listening with students in the post-study focus group interviews. And as reported by students, they are more likely to enjoy, to enjoy the process of podcast listening without the attachment of assessment. And another key finding is compared to Using the existing English podcasts on public platforms, students actually prefer to listen to the podcast created by teachers, mainly for the reason that they are familiar with our voice and they can easily approach us to discuss what they've learned via the podcast. Apart from that, level appropriateness is also one important reason why they will prefer teacher creators podcasts over the existing English podcasts. So conclusion was that this was a useful thing and is useful to make available to students. Um, as we saw, not every student takes advantage of it, but it's there for them. And the students perceive this as an effective self-learning tool. Limitations that we encountered, one was the platform. So as mentioned, Android users could download each episode, Apple users could not. Uh, additionally, we considered the fact that we 
did this towards the tail end of the pandemic and due to pandemic fatigue and just everything being online, it was also possible that students upon their first semester back together in person in the classroom may not have been interested in um, accessing so many online tools, as well as the fact that we must remember that this sample was only 75 students and therefore we can't make too many generalizations based on this one uh, research project. However, we did think of a lot of areas that we would like to take further action or would recommend others to do in the future. And um, the one that we have actually begun exploring and working on an additional project is another uh, teacher-produced, non-assessment, non-instructional uh, podcast. So this is what we've been working on. We are working on a new podcast called Culture Clarity. So as the name indicates, it's about intercultural communication. But again, this podcast is non-instructional and it is not syllabus-based. In this podcast, we discuss all possible aspects related to intercultural communication with our dear colleagues. And we also invite student guests as well to share their own personal experiences related to cultural communication. This time, we are aiming to share the podcast via public platform in China to reach a wider impact. Right. And additionally, choosing to call this culture clarity gives us the option to push this beyond the English language team and expand it eventually, hopefully based on success, to our Japanese, Spanish and Chinese teaching teams as well. Thank you for joining us today. Here are our references. We would love to hear questions from you in that time. Um, our details are here, and we would love to hear from any of you who might be interested in collaborating on a wider project of podcasting. Thank you very much. Thank you.